Hello and welcome to Project Art Now. Today we are talking about foreshadowing. There is a new video every week with storytelling talks and drawings. If this is something you fancy, make sure to subscribe and click on the little bell. Now let's get right to it. What is foreshadowing? In a layman's terms. Foreshadowing is the writers telling you what is going to happen without them telling you what is going to happen. Think of a writer as a farmer planting seeds. You know something is going to grow, you just don't know what kind of plant will be. Of course, it's always fun to guess. Now, following the same analogy, you might not exactly know what kind of seeds the farmer is planting, but there are clues. For example, at some point, the farmer might have mentioned they love tomato juice, so it'd be fair to assume that seeds are for tomato plants. Sometimes writers fear that readers will find out their endgame way too early on the story. Honestly, I've been one of those writers. If you can relate to this, let me assure you that even if the readers figure out the big reveal before it happens, it's not the worst thing, but you can avoid it. The trick is on minimize the hints. Let's back on the farmer. Imagine all the farmer does is talking about tomatoes, then it'd be no surprise if they are planting tomato seed. Avoid going into the opposite direction, giving the clues at all. Let's say they never mention anything about tomatoes, not even once, and then all of a sudden, <coughs> tomato plant. After all, when the big reveal comes out of nowhere, one might say, Well, that was anticlimactic. So, should I foreshadow? every reveal, not necessarily. You can deliver a few surprises without having done any foreshadowing and get away with it. My advice? Only do it for lower impact reveals and even there avoid overdoing it. Foreshadowing can be direct or indirect. For a direct approach you can use narration, dialogue and even characters in their talks. A great example is the Super Saiyan. There is a mention of the legendary Space Warrior from the beginning of the C portion of the story and while it's mentioned more than once by different characters and we know it will be important doesn't steal from the actual plot, rather it complements it and therefore when Goku transforms for the first time it is satisfying. Now let's take a look at indirect foreshadowing. This is given by subtle clues that usually are harder to know what they mean until the reveal. A good example of this is seen in Shadow Frost by Kokoma, where the images of various gods from that world are shown like paints and statues. There is also mention of them from the characters which will be considered as direct but mostly common expressions like saying for the gods so I can say it still counts as indirect and so when the first of those gods makes an appearance it's not just some hyper powerful rando who came out of nowhere and creates one of the best scenes in the book. Now here are a couple of my favorite examples but before that do let me know in the comments about your favorite reveals or big moments in a story and how they were foreshadowed. In the in Spider-Man comics, there is a storyline where Doc Ock takes over the mind of Peter Parker, becoming the self-proclaimed superior Spider-Man, and as arrogant as that might sound, in all fairness, he seems to be doing a better job. He even gets Jonah Jameson on his side. However, later he reveals his true colors and blackmails the journalist turned major, causing Jonah to hate Spider-Man once again. This foreshadows how, by still acting like a villain, he will fail as a hero. In Merlin, it is foreshadowed that the noble and kind Morgana will become evil by how the dragon uses the term witch with disdain when referring to her. Kilgara can see into the future so he knows what path will Morgana take, and I am aware that many or probably everyone knew Morgana will go into the sight of the bodies even before watching the series. But if we look at it separated from the Arthurian tales that inspired it, there is no denying the foreshadowing technique was superb. By now, I am sure it's perfectly clear the importance of foreshadow in storytelling. But to reinforce, now we'll point out to a couple of examples where the lack of foreshadowing leads to what I consider to be awful storytelling. Now I want to clarify that by awful storytelling, I'm merely referring to the particular scene and not necessarily the story as a whole. The first one is from Merlin, which is funny because I praised it a moment ago for its good use of the technique. Now. The scene is when the dragon is freed by Merlin, he goes into a destructive rampage and no one is capable of stopping him, but then it turns out Merlin is the son of a dragon lord, meaning he can control dragons. Then Merlin's father dies and Merlin inherits the power. And the problem I have with this one is that it comes out of nowhere. It feels as if the writers just decided to give Merlin a random power that coincidentally 
was the perfect solution for a dark situation and while we're in the topic the whole deal with Kilgara destroying Camelot makes no sense. Sure, he holds grudge against others but the way he always expresses himself led me to believe his goal was to have helped Arthur reach his destiny as king of Camelot, not to burn it all to the ground. Overall, I love the series but the whole dragon lord thing was just terrible. The second example, although it wasn't as bad, still terrible enough and that is the Super Saiyan Blue or as it's originally known Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan and I get it they created to sell more toys. I am okay with it but I can help to feel as if they didn't care in the slightest on how it will be introduced and that bothers me. However, despite everything I have said I will add that you can still have great moments or revelations in storytelling without the need of foreshadowing and I know it sounds like I am contradicting myself but the thing is those moments are extremely rare and as great as they are foreshadowing will have made them better. Consider Gandalf the White. He wasn't foreshadowed in any way shape or form in the books or in the movies and yet from the battle against the Barlow to his return as Gandalf the White, it remains one of the most iconic moments ever created in storytelling. I must say that while I did read the books myself, on doing research for this video, I found out that some people think it was indeed foreshadowed, but honestly, I just couldn't see it. Let me know in the comments if you agree with me or if I am dead wrong. What about the other extreme, when everything is foreshadowed, but at the end nothing is revealed, that is just as bad, and consider it damage story. Let's Let's bring the farmer back, imagine that after all the planted seeds nothing ever grows, that would be disappointing to say the least. Well, we are now at the end of the video, hope you find it useful, if so please like and subscribe, let me know in the comments what topics would you like me to cover in the future. Now here are a couple of my previous videos, please enjoy them, bye bye!